Amongst the forerunners of female rap, there are a select few that rose above their peers to become royalty. And amongst these select few sit legends like Eve, Lauren and Missy, enjoying the view and glamour that comes from being at the top. These ladies are often targeted by their underlings in an effort to get their own plate at the table. But time always tells who belongs there and who does not. Today we are talking about a woman who has undeniably deserved her own seat. With a career spanning four decades, six studio albums, four of which were top 20 albums and a fairly successful stint in reality television, we are going to be breaking down one of rap's leading ladies. From her rigid upbringing, to the tragedy that rocked her world time and time again, to her decades-long beef with Kaya, let's dive into the story of Trina. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Trina was born in the late 70s in Miami, Florida. Her natural exotic beauty was a gift from both of her parents, with her mother traveling from the Bahamas while her father was of Dominican descent. She had a fairly standard upbringing. She attended high school in Miami where she learned her flair in the majorettes. Following her graduation around 1992, Katrina turned her focus to her future and began to study further towards becoming a real estate agent. Trina didn't acquire a serious boyfriend until late in her schooling career. The boyfriend in question was Derek Harris, aka Hollywood, concert promoter, and half-brother to Maurice Young, aka Trick Daddy, pre-mega success. Trick claimed that since so many men wanted to get with her but couldn't, Hollywood offered to pay Trick $1,000 if he could get Trina to talk to him face to face. Trick was successful in meeting her and introduced her to Hollywood, resulting in Trina's first ever serious relationship. They dated for about a year before one terrible night around 1994 when Trina was only 16 years old. After the pair spent the night out riding go-karts, Hollywood dropped her off for the night before heading home. That was the last time she saw him as he was shot down while sitting in a parked Buick with the wrong person. Hollywood's death traumatized her deeply. She later recalled, I was young and didn't understand to lose someone so close. You don't want to believe that they're gone. But it made me realize that you shouldn't take anything in life for granted. It was one of the hardest things I've had to deal with. Hollywood was a great guy. He didn't deserve that. Trina took a long time to recover from the death of her boyfriend, but she was protected and supported through it by Hollywood's brother, Trick, and friends who had grown to view her as a little sister. They remained close for a long time after it happened, and it was through them that Trina found her voice. By around 1997, Trick was on the rise and had almost completed his second album. He had one single left to finish, concept and bars all planned out, but he needed a woman to complete his vision. Though initially hesitant to try, Trina eventually agreed to rap for Trick because she was amongst friends. Over the course of five hours and several scribbled rhymes, they managed to piece together the highly successful hit, None. The track was the lead single off of Trick's second studio album, www.thug.com, and rocketed up the charts, reaching number 62 on the Billboard 200. I am from Miami, Florida, born and raised, actually, Liberty City. I was actually just finishing real estate school, like right around the same time, maybe like a month later. Trick came to me, he wanted me to do this record. I don't know if I really wanted to do it at first. And he was like, I just need you to be you. I just want you to be just how you would be if somebody, you know, was to say something you ain't like. I just want you to just spaz out and just go off. Choosing to feature on the song was a choice that would change Trina's life forever and set her firmly on the path to success. After that, she got offered a record deal with Slip and Slide with distribution through Atlantic. And after some hesitation, she accepted the offer and a baddest was born. Trina had never previously aspired to be a rapper, which was what made her story so unique. Right from her very first performance, she was incredibly shy on stage, with Trick having to actually push her on stage. Once there, she squeezed her eyes shut to counteract her stage fright, but it was truly the fans that made her enjoy being in the spotlight. 
I'm saying all these things I've been told my whole life are not what a person like me is supposed to be saying. Yet look at them. They love it. I was trying to figure it out like, do all these women talk like me? I'm just trying to figure it out because it's my verse. It's very provocative. It's Luke's Miami. It's strip clubs. It's all that. That's the culture. And because I'm so aware of it, I'm not in fear of it. So I'm thinking I must be the only fearless person here because I got the balls to say this. And the rest of these people are just living vicariously through me. Once she started going, Trina was hard pressed to even consider stopping. Shortly after signing to Slip and Slide, she began working on her debut. The album dropped around 2000 and was titled The Baddest and peaked on the Billboard 200 at number 33, spawning the singles The Baddest and Pullover, both of which performed well on the charts and resulted in the album going gold. Overall, The Baddest B is a good debut album by Trina because it showed the world who she truly is, a bad girl with lots of femininity. The album is full of sexually inspired lyrics and songs that promote the message of girl power. Overall, the songs that stand out to me are obviously The Baddest B, it's a song designed strictly for the clubs. Take Me is another good one because it showed the world that Trina isn't truly a freak all the time. She's also a lady and considers herself an equal to her partners. Pullover is dope because it makes you want to dance and I'll Always is another hot gem on this project because it shows us Trina's sensitive, softer, I love you side. Your, your, your album is titled The Baddest B. Uh -huh. Okay, and you said there's nothing wrong with that because you have your own definition of the B word. Right. What's your definition of that? Well, to me, the B word is just the definition of a strong woman. Anybody that can get out there and do for herself and can hold it down, you know, don't really need to depend on somebody else to get what they need done. You know, to me, that's like an empowerment for women. Almost immediately after releasing The Baddest Bitch, she began working on her next project. Her superiors at the label were impressed with her and wanted to take advantage of the heat around her name at the time. As a result, she got far more creative control than she had been granted initially. I had creative control versus on the first album where everything was done for me. Basically everybody was like, we got this beat, we got this. We got that. We want you to get in there and write to this track, write to this song, write to this topic. This album, I got to pick my own production. I got to name the songs. I wrote about whatever I wanted to talk about. I worked with whoever I wanted to work with. So everything was really what I wanted to do. It's more what Trina's about. How Trina looks. How Trina feels. The things that Trina consists of. The sophomore offering was titled Diamond Princess and hit fans around 2002. No doubt, now you look as good as you do in person as in them videos. This is my first time I got a chance to get close to you. But not only that, so that's just a compliment from me, you know. Thank you. Little, uh, Thank you. But how's this new album doing for you? The new album is actually great. The Diamond Princess in stores August 27th. Um, I got the first single, No Panties, featuring my girl Tweet. I got a hot lot of collabos. I got Missy Elliott E, Ludacris, Jagged Edge, Fabulous, Bath Gate, Cash Money Millionaires, Baby, and TQ. So I'm doing my thing, holding it down, Miami style. You know how we do that. The album was preceded by the hit singles No Panties and Be All Right, both of which performed well on the charts. The album debuted at number 14 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 67,000 copies in the first week. Trina was on a roll with absolutely everything to prove at this point. She once again proved her hustle by dropping another album just over two years after her second offering, this time titled Glamorous Life. I woke up around 10 o'clock this morning, I gave myself a stretch up a morning. The new album was released around 2005, this time accompanied by three singles namely Don't Trip, Here We Go and The Club. This time the album debuted at number 11 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 77,000 copies in the first week. Here We Go was also one of her first widely successful singles at the time. It was so successful in fact that it went gold the following year. Well that's how I look, let's talk about the single Here We Go with go. Kelly Rowland. How did you guys get together for that? Um, I've been knowing Kelly for a while. I got a chance to meet her a while ago, and we actually was in South Africa for like a week together doing shows over there. Um, and we got a chance to hang out and bond and talk, and she wanted to work with me, and I wanted to work with her, so it was like perfect timing. And we was just talking about working together, and then, you know, two years passed, and I was still working my album, and it just came. You know, 
was happening, it was just the right time. Actually, that was the last song to get recorded for the album. But I almost didn't make it, so you know, it was a great thing to actually have it done. And for her to actually be on the show, she's just like, hey, yes. Trina was unstoppable at this point. She parted ways with Atlantic, keeping her signing with Slip and Slide but partnering up with EMI and DP Entertainment to present her latest offering. Her fourth album, titled Still the Baddest, took slightly longer to reach fans than before as it came out around 2008. Now, It debuted at number 6 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 47,000 copies in the first week. Album, so. No doubt, this is my fourth album. Four. I'm really happy for it to come in number one. That's amazing. That's what's up. Congrats. So, you know what I mean? Thank you. You know, it, it's an it's a, it's a experience. You know, it's, it's a hard job. You got to grind it out. You got to be focused. You got to be consistent. You know, and a lot of people ask, how, I, how have I been so consistent? I don't know. I just think it's just work. I look at it as an everyday job. You know, every day I'm trying to elevate myself to the next level, trying to change or trying to constantly do something I didn't do the last time. And, you know, just get it, you know, basically, you know. The album spawned three singles. Single Again, I Got a Thing For You, and Look Back At Me. The singles performed well, but not as well as previously. And this would mark a slight turning point in Trina's career. While still considered highly successful, her next two albums did not perform as well as their predecessors. She began slowing her pace down slightly and maturing her sound as she grew up. Trina's next offering, Amazing, was far more mature than her previous albums. While still charged with sexual tension and innuendo, the album was not as explicit as her usual offerings and was catered strongly to the dance floor. Um, it's major growth. You know what? Um, this new album, I, I, I feel like it's my best record. I put a lot of energy into it. I had a chance to do a lot of production and also uh, I did a lot of crossover records. I did a lot of pop records and mix records. I stepped outside of my element of the form and did some different things. So that was really fun. Amazing dropped around 2010 and was accompanied by the singles That's My Attitude, Million Dollar Girl, Always, and White Girl. When the album came out, it sold about 32,000 copies in the first week and debuted at number 13 on the Billboard 200. Sales aside, the album was special for Trina as it was her fifth successful release, fourth in a row to peak within the top 20, and she was one of the first few women in rap to achieve this. But it was special to her in her own way as well. I had grown lyrically, musically, everything. I wanted to still be saucy and be me, but it was a little bit less. The lyrics were a little toned down, me and the label weren't seeing eye to eye. After 12 years in the industry, all of which she had been signed to slip and slide, Trina wanted a change. She was around 32 years old at the time and no longer wanted to be young, wild, and hypersexual. She had no idea what her next steps would be, but she knew she had to take them alone. At that point, I said to myself, you've changed, you've grown, you're the baddest bitch but you're a woman and you understand you're vulnerable and sensitive. And you want people to understand and respect that. Trina parted ways with Slip and Slide on very good terms. She became an independent artist but had no idea what that meant. Unlike most rappers who bust their butts to try and land a signing, Trina had been the one pursued from the very beginning of her career. Never had she made mixtapes and passed them around. Never had she not had someone helping and guiding her on her next best move. She spent some time enjoying her freedom, dabbling in reality TV now and then, and occasionally dropping a mixtape, but things got tougher and tougher for Trina. Around 2010, her phone was stolen, and a few weeks later, all of her nudes were leaked. Ironically, in an interview released a week prior to the scandal, she had been asked her opinions on the leakage of sex tapes and nude photos for publicity. She responded with quite some class while also talking about her lost cell phone. I personally would not want a picture of me exposed leaked. I lost my phone and I had some pictures of me that I don't want the world to see. I'm thinking that if it ever came out, I'm devastated. It's not sex tape pictures, but it's still, I don't want you to see it. Losing a phone. It happens. I was so devastated about this phone. I was calling up my mom crying like, Mom, I just feel like what's personal is personal. I don't feel like, as an artist, that I need to do anything to expose myself. I don't need to put out nude photos for press. I don't need to do that. I don't want a sex tape of me and my significant other to be worldwide for the world to see. That's a personal endeavor. 
Now despite the cell phone being stolen, she maintained that even if the photos fell into the wrong hands, no one would ever see her in a sex tape. For me, I don't have no sex tape. You ain't gonna see no sex tape. And I didn't make none. If I made one, I'm keeping it. You ain't gonna have it. Now of course the photos were leaked, but like Trina said, there was no sex tape to speak of. Now after this, Trina tried not to speak about this in interviews, and eventually people lost interest and moved on. People do just all kind of stuff, you know what I mean? And I think if it's something that comes out and you didn't do it, and it's an invasion of your privacy, that's bad. You know what I mean? That's bad. That's why you gotta be clear with people that you with because you can be with your boyfriend and y'all break up and there's a second mm -hmm. oh well it's now on the internet and that's the bad kind yeah. of so you know that was just it's just the way it is you know and i, I mean it's just a, it's just it's, it's just insane how stuff just happens honestly you know what i mean yeah. but i'm mm -hmm. totally i don't care for the publicity thing of the leakage of this or the mm -hmm. photo like it's just too much for me like it's it's too much other stuff you can do that that that's a good thing for your life and your career and you don't need to do all that you know then in 2013, she was rocked by her greatest tragedy yet, the loss of her brother, in a shockingly similar situation to when she lost Hollywood. She received a call that her brother had been shot after an argument with a friend turned sour. The tragedy absolutely destroyed Trina's world. She was utterly heartbroken and didn't know what to do with herself. I was totally lost. I was at a dead place. I didn't care. I didn't want to do music. I didn't want to do anything. Also tonight, only six was there minutes after a famous rapper's brother is shot and killed this morning in Northwest Miami Dade. And then, right at the time she normally would have released an album, she was hit by a writer's block. No song seemed worth recording or releasing. She dabbled some more in reality TV, releasing an EP here and there, but nothing that truly screamed Trina is back. She was incredibly critical of herself. She would write, rewrite, and scrap songs all together before releasing a forced EP and then starting over. I had to say to myself, Trina, you're extremely smart. What are you doing? Get in the studio. Focus. Get your team together. Let's go make it happen. And she did. On the 16th anniversary of The Baddest Bitch, she dropped a single, one titled Overnight. A body in the face, uh, but you never see the tears when they roll down my face. Uh. The single was a cathartic emotional dump of all the frustration she was feeling. Though the single mostly flew under the radar, it was the kickstart Trina needed to get herself back to where she wanted to be. A week later, she dropped the single Forget That. And in 2017, it was announced that she would be starring alongside Trick Daddy on Love & Hip Hop Miami, which she stars in to this day. Album number 6 called The One was recorded in the second season of Love & Hip Hop Miami and released to the public around 2019. So, the One. Are you the one? I am the one. I mm -hmm. feel like I've been through enough. I've done enough. I hold my own ground. I, I have a roof over my head. I can stand my own. I have my own. I don't depend on need nobody for nothing. I feel like I've grown into the person that I am, the one that I am. I am the one. Five singles were released off the project, namely If It Ain't Me, Get Money, Mama, On His Face, and Baps. Hey yo, Trina, you ready? Hey Nick, let's get him. The last of which generated a lot of controversy. Babs is a single that Trina recorded with Nicki Minaj, which stands for Bad Ass Pretty Sagittarius. The controversy in question was actually stirred up by Trina's head of A&R at her rock star music group label, Reginald Saunders. According to Saunders, Nicki Minaj didn't really promote Babs like she should have, and that's why no music video was filmed. This isn't the first time Nicki Minaj has pulled this stunt, and trust me, it's cool. I can't get over how fake people can be for a little fame, likes, and followers. When everybody tried to warn me, I still gave her the benefit of the doubt. I can't wait to see how all of this is about to play out, because you can't stop karma's reign. Shame on you. I mostly feel sorry for the bobs because they have no clue of the deceiver and manipulator their leader is. Now Nikki was not about to let that stand and shared her viewpoint on it shortly in an episode of Queen Radio. I always ask people, do you have a budget, you know, to promote the record? That's it. it it's a business. Like, I don't understand. According to Nikki, she really did want to do the video, but when she reached out to Trina's team, she heard nothing in response. For your team or anybody's team to feel like I owe you anything or to go out and disrespect me because I'm showing love to another female and you're not going to check them, then that's not cool. Because I dropped my own song that same day and still asked you, hey, come, out, come up to Queen Radio and promote your album. 
These are things that I don't have to do. Every time people say things, if they're entitled, I, I'm not entitled to do anything for anyone. No one does anything for me. Shortly after Nikki's statement, Trina took to IG Live to take accountability for her team and stand up for Nikki in a lengthy rant. This is my situation. This is my issue. This is my album. This is my brand. This is my name. I built it from the ground up. Therefore, I would do anything necessary to protect that. I had a 45 minute conversation on the phone with Nicki Minaj about business, about my record, about my song, about everything. It's not about a video. It's bigger than a video. The video is just a portion of what's happening. This is more about making sure the business is right, making sure the radio is right, making sure the record is doing whatever it needs to be doing on radio. I had this conversation with my team, full out, full fledged. Everybody understood this. There was never a discussion that the video was never going to be done. That wasn't the discussion we had. The discussion was more so about the business. There is no beef between me and Nicki Minaj. There will be no disrespect for Nicki Minaj or anyone else that's on my album. My team speaking out. My team got so much to say. I'ma take the blame for my team because guess what? Me and my team, we dropped the ball. Bad business is what's calling all of this havoc to happen. All of this nonsense. All of this drama. These feelings. This personal. Everybody got an opinion. That's what it is. It's bad business. Now following that super weird almost beef, the duo remained on good terms after that. And this business is called business. All business ain't good business. Some business is bad business. I feel like right now I did bad business. That's my fault. That's nobody else's fault. I got to take the rap for that. I got to take the L for that. But I'm not taking no losses. I'm a fucking mash on and make everything I said happen, happen. That's what I do. I don't ask for handouts. I don't ask for nobody to do nothing for me. Whatever it is, you know it's 100 when it comes with me. So this whole Nicki Minaj video situation, this isn't about Nicki Minaj in a video. I had a 45-minute conversation on the phone with Nicki Minaj about business about my record, about this song, about everything. It's not about a video, this is bigger than a video. The video is just a portion of what's happening. This is more about making sure the business is right, making sure the radio is right, making sure the record is doing whatever it needs to be doing on radio. I had this conversation with my team, full out, full fledged. Everybody understands this. Everybody understood this. Um. There was never a discussion that the video was never going to be done. That wasn't a discussion that we had. The discussion was more so about the business. I respect that. Um, she did her part. It's up to me and my team to do our part. That's how I feel about it. And now for the heaviest and only real beef that Trina has ever gotten into, her beef with Kaya. Who is Kaya you ask? Well I made about two whole videos about her, so check those out. But to most of the world, Kaya is known as the woman who made my neck and my back. Do it now, lick it good, suck this pussy just like you should. Kaya is known for trolling and beefing with a lot of rappers, but her biggest beef to date was with Trina and it goes back decades. It all started when Trina dropped her first hit The Baddest Bitch around 2000. After the album dropped, Kaya claimed she had written part of the song and received no credit for it. After this, Kaya decided she was going to troll Trina until the end of time. Trina then fired back at Kaya and her allegations on a song called What's Beef. Now after that tirade, Kaya dropped a diss track at Trina called Hit Em Up. You know, and you know, I when, when she put the disc record out on me, I've been on her neck. That's it. It's fun and games. I don't give a fuck about sour puss. 
But when you put a diss record out on somebody, you got to know, bitch, we we beefing. This is hip hop. This is entertainment. Hip hop is go at a whole throw. That's it, bitch. That's it. Let it go. Don't nobody don't care about Trina. This is this is this is entertainment, girl. You talk about a bitch supposed to take up for Trina for what? You taking up for Trina? Chill, leave for Trina. Hold like you suck. Get out, girl. Get out your feelings, girl. <sighs> God, girl. Around 2008, when Trina released her third album, Still the Baddest, Kaya decided to review the album on her MySpace page track for track. And let's just say, nothing good was said. Amongst other things, she mocked Trina for the miscarriage she had experienced around 2006 with her then boyfriend Lil Wayne. She also called her cursed and a bobblehead. A lot of the things she said were too vulgar for YouTube. But here's a snippet. Once again on April Fool's Day, even though I knew it was a joke, I got out of my bed, put on my stilettos, and went to Target to get the nastiest bitches album. I hope that bitch does the same. See, we have to stick together. Remember? So I did. I bought it. And once again, it was a disappointment. My recommendation? Please don't waste your time or your money. Burn it. Bootleg it. Rip it. <laughs> but please don't waste your money. Go get a seven with it. I suffered for y'all. It's okay. I got y'all. Nasty Music 08. Here is my review. Track four, single again. Hated it. We give that shit two thumbs down. You single again, but not by choice. Ho, Wheezy woke up. He don't love you, ho. You single again cause he left your dog ass. Ho, oh, what you gonna name your baby? Baby? Cause in 98 he was f***ing baby. At this point, Trina had enough and fired back with a song called You Ain't Nothing. It's still going on, so bitches get gone for I rang the alarm and put a mess cause to you the ain't song. Talking. After that, Trina managed to ignore Kaya for the most part until the late 2010s when Kaya made fun of her for fighting with her co-star on Love & Hip Hop, Nikki Natural. Why is she messing with that little young ass girl and she's 49 years old? I don't know why she on TV still acting like she's the baddest bitch the way she looking. That girl is more of a woman than you, bitch. In addition to the taunts, Kaya claimed she would roast Trina in a versus battle, forcing Trina to respond to this without mentioning Kaya's name. Everybody knows me. I'm a queen. This is called royalty over here, okay? I'm not stepping off my throne to address no bum, no chicks that are beneath me, and nobody that has not worked as hard as I worked for anything. So when you girls or whatever you want to be are calling my name, you want to battle, you want to do all this, first of all, make sure you have 10 hits. Make sure you have enough records. Make sure you're on my level if you think you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me because you cannot. She closed off her arguments in a later interview on her opinion of Kaya, although she never addressed her by name. In true Trina style, she did not respond. Instead, she went up and did the verses against Eve. What an episode. Today, Trina is still a rock solid icon. She works her butt off to make good music and is still fairly active in the music industry. Around 2019, Trina scored a hot song with Mulatto, one called from the south. Well, he can chill like Odell. It's what in the pussy got no smell. Can't come to my residence, leaving no evidence. Me me at the hotel. To date, this is one of Trina's biggest charting features. She still stars on Love and Hip Hop Miami and is rumored to be working on another album. If you want to catch up with her, her Instagram handle is at Trina Rockstar and on Twitter using the same name. On Spotify, she has almost 900,000 monthly listeners and her most listened to songs are Bitch from the South. Here we go. Clap. Be all right and pull over. Trina, congrats because you did get engaged. Thank um, you. And we did see this online. So how has the engagement been? Like, is there a date yet that you're working on? Or? It's not. I, um, I haven't really thought a lot like that about it. You know what? After it happened just fast, kind of. And I think um, I'm like still in the taking it in process. Don't you ever try to come for the queen. You're not the baddest, you the saddest. You are the original Cardi B. Cardi B just came in the game and she done won all kinds of awards. So you done been in the game for 17 years and you ain't won nothing but a disease. <laughs> oh my God. Oh I don't know why you let Charlotte Man the Goddess set you up for this and I hear that you twerking and dancing off of my neck and my back for some of the young old videos down there in Miami. That's all that you can do. All you 
can do is copy and steal from the queen because you will never be queens. You will always be fools and bed bugs. <laughs> you deserve to be on Love & Hip Hop because you're trash. You the main one that was hollering that you would never do Love & Hip Hop. But oh, now you running there because you're running out of time and money. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Trina in your opinion? Let me know down below. Knew what happened to video dropping next week. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace. Perfect.